Are you interested in getting data for an application you're creating? Or maybe you want to access just the data you need in the quickest and most efficient way. If so, you may want to consider using the Census Bureau's Application Programming Interface, or API. The Census Data API provides the unique functionality to request exactly the data you need, whether that's an entire table of data or just a few individual estimates. And the great news is that once you have located the data you need, you can save it as a CSV file to view in Excel. The process is as easy as tweaking the URL, saving your results, and making a few quick edits in Excel. Let's check it out. To show you just how easy it can be to use the API to find data, let's walk through an example. Let's look for a few different data points using the 2023 ACS one-year data profiles for all congressional districts in Texas. Specifically, let's find percent estimates for housing units with no vehicles, people in poverty, and people with a disability. One great thing about the API is that even if each of these data points comes from a different table, the API still allows us to see the data together. Although you can use the API with any browser, I'm going to use Google Chrome so I can see the API results within the browser. To get started, visit census.gov developers. Click Available APIs on the top of the page. We can now see a list of the available datasets. If you click the American Community Survey heading, it expands to show the available options. For this example, click on the American Community Survey one-year data heading. Now we can see some information about the different types of tables from the ACS one-year estimates. Scrolling down, you can select your desired year. I'm going to stick with using 2023. Then we choose the type of table we're interested in getting data for. Today, we're going to work with the data profiles. They're a great starting point to get broad social, economic, housing, and demographic statistics across all topics from the American Community Survey. And they include estimates as well as percentages. The easiest way to get started is to click Examples and Supported Geography under Data Profiles. This takes us to the API Discovery tool, which provides a list of variables, geographies, and other technical details needed to make API calls for this data set. Right click where it says Examples and open it in a new tab. This page provides a list of all the different types of geographies that are compatible with the 2023 ACS one-year data profiles and a variety of examples to fine tune our results for each type of geography. For our example, I'll scroll down to where it says state congressional district on the left. It's geography level or summary level 500. Here we see three example queries to choose from. You'll notice differences in the geography portion near the end of the URL. The first two examples with wildcard symbols shown by the asterisks will give results for all congressional districts. The first link calls all congressional districts in the US and the second link calls all congressional districts in all states. This is really just two different ways of asking the API for the same data. The last link provides results for a single congressional district. The 10 indicates that this congressional district is in Delaware. The 00 is the code for the congressional district at large in Delaware. Let's use the second example because it's the easiest query to edit to get data for all congressional districts in a single state. Right click on the second link and open it in a new tab. While the query isn't currently providing any actual data, we can see some output. Let's take a closer look at the first line to get an idea of what's showing. First, we have the name of the Congressional District, which happens to be Congressional District 4 in Alabama. This is followed by the two-digit State Federal Information Processing Standard, or FIPS code, which is 01 for Alabama. And then last, we have the Congressional District code, which is 04 for this specific Congressional District. The first thing I'd like to do is narrow this query down to show just the congressional districts for Texas. To find the state FIPS codes for Texas, we can use Control and F, type in Texas, and quickly see that the state code for Texas is 48. 
Click into the address bar and replace the wildcard symbol after state with 48. Then press enter. I like to press enter between each step, that way if I make a mistake, I know exactly where I went wrong. Now I can see that I'm only seeing lines for the congressional districts in Texas. Now that we have the geography selected, we can focus on the data points that we need. So how do we know the names of the variables we are interested in? Navigate back to the API Discovery Tool page and click where it says Variables. Here you can find the name of every variable that's associated with the 2023 one-year data profiles. Let's take a look at one of the variables on the page, dp02 underscore 0001e. This is the variable for total households. The names of the variables have meaning. The dp02 portion means the variable is from data profile table dp02, and the 0001e means the variable is the estimate from the first row of the table. Now let's look for the variables we need. On this variables page, press Ctrl and F, and type a keyword to start looking for our variable. After typing in vehicle, we see a few matches. Read the labels carefully to see that the variable name dp04 underscore 0058e provides the estimate for the number of housing units with no vehicles available, and dp04 underscore 0058pe provides the percent of housing units with no vehicles available. We want the percent, so let's copy that variable and go back to our other tab with our congressional district query. Paste the variable dp04 underscore 0058pe into the query directly after the name variable, separating the two with a comma but no spaces. Then press enter. Now we can see that we have data in our results. Reading the first line of our results, we can see that 6.2% of housing units in Congressional District 1 in Texas had no vehicle available. Repeating this process, we can search the keywords poverty and disability on the variables page and add up to 50 variables to our query, separating each one with a comma. I've done that already, so I'll add them to our query. Type a comma after 0058PE, then add the variable for poverty, dp03 underscore 0128PE, comma, and then add the variable for disability, dp02 underscore 0072PE. Then press enter and see that each of the three variables have been updated in the first line of our results. Reading our results, we can see that for Congressional District 1 in Texas, 6.2% of housing units had no vehicle available, 14.9% of all people lived in poverty, and 16.5% of people had a disability. If we wanted to add variable labels to our results, we can add the descriptive parameter ampersand descriptive equals true to the end of our URL and press enter. Once we do this, you can see the labels in the second row of the API results. To save our results in a CSV format, I'll add the output parameter, ampersand output format equals CSV, to the end of our URL right after the descriptive parameter. Keep in mind that API calls are case sensitive, so be mindful of capitalization when using the output format parameter. Once you hit enter, the file will either automatically download or in some cases open your file browser. If your file browser opens, name the file and click save. Then open the downloaded file. From here, you can use the Excel functions like wrap text to make the download easier to read. After you've edited the download to your liking, you can rename your file and save it in a different format by selecting File, Save As, and then choose the format you want from the Type drop-down menu. In this case, I will select to save it as an Excel workbook. You can find more information on other parameters you can use in the API by going to the Census Data API User Guide, found in the Developers page under Guidance. Once you are in the user guide, select the tab for core concepts.
I hope this tutorial has helped in learning how to access data using the Census Data API. For more guidance on using this, please visit our resources page at the link below. Thank you.